I welcome you all for this NPTEL lecture on earthquake resistant design of foundation. This is 25th lecture and we continue with pile foundation. Uh, let me share the slides with you. So you could see that in this lecture, we are going to talk about design of piles in liquefiable soil. So this will be first lectures of design of piles in liquefiable soil. And uh, as uh, this is part of the third module, this course which is on pile foundations and in this case uh, this is the last uh, part of the uh, this third module that is design of piles and liquefiable solids. Just before this we have already discussed two lectures on CPRF that is combined pile draft foundation. So today we are going to start the design of piles and liquefiable soils. and as you may be aware this is, this is a very important topic because when the piles are passing through the liquefiable soils, then its design is really complicated and difficult. So today's lecture is in that direction that suppose if your soil is not normal soil or it is not, uh, you know, that, uh, the, that some of the soil layers can liquefy, then how you will deal with that, so we, that we are going to discuss in today's lecture. And before I go ahead, let me acknowledge that this most of the content of this lecture is taken from the book anti, uh, which is entitled as Design of Pile Foundation and Liquefiable Soils published by Imperial College Press and uh, the authors Madhubashi et al are there. So the speaker is grateful uh, to these authors for providing such a good uh, you know the literature where this uh, there is a uh, this book is completely on dealing with the different piles, single piles as well as pile groups passing through the liquefiable soils. Now, continue with that, let's discuss that what are the contents of today's lecture. So, when we talk about this content, what we are going to talk, design of piles and liquefiable soils, that is the lecture one, and perhaps we'll discuss an, uh, another lecture on the same topic. So, we are going to talk about introduction, that uh, what are the case uh, issues, then second thing, performance of pile foundations in past earthquakes, that how they have performed, particularly uh, what are the failures of the foundations uh, due to liquefaction or due to shaking that we are going to discuss. The next is modes of failure in liquefiable soils. When we talk about modes of failure in liquefiable soils, it will be covered into two parts. One is failure mechanism for single pile and the second is same failure mechanism for pile group. So let's talk about introduction. When we go for introduction, we will have brief introduction about liquefaction. What is liquefaction and how it works? We are going to talk about that because this course is on earthquake resistant design of foundation. Those who are already familiar with the liquefaction, they may be that uh, this introduction may be uh, review for them. So what happens during you know that uh, liquefaction is a phenomena which is normally occurs in saturated loose sands. So naturally for liquefaction it is necessary that there should be some water inside the soil. There is no water then the liquefaction is out, is ruled out. So the water is there then the soil should be saturated and it is happens in loose, loose conditions. If it is already in dense condition then chances of liquefaction decrease drastically. So coming to the introduction part it is here when loosely deposited sandy soil layers are subjected to shaking from earthquake loading. The soil grains tend to reorganize into dense packing, thereby exhibiting a volumetric contraction. So what we see is then due to shaking, which occurs due to earthquake or uh, uh, like you know that, what will happen if it is soil condition is in the loose condition? It, it will try to pack uh, the particles and once there will be dense packing, then what happens if uh, the soil layers are fully saturated Then whatever contraction tendency of the soil layer, it will be manifested as rise in the pore water pressure as there is insufficient time for the pore water pressure to escape from the soil layer, all right. So in, in this slide, in, there is a difference between first and second case. Suppose you have loosely deposited sandy soil layer, which is in dry condition. So once you apply the earthquake loading, then what will happen? Soil will get densified. There will be no liquefaction and there will be change in the volume. volume. Volume of the soil will decrease. 
But if you have water inside the foil, and then you provide some shaking to that, then there will be rise in the pore water pressure. And this rise in the pore water pressure, if you have you know uh, the uh, you have the effective stress is nothing but total stress minus pore water pressure. When the pore water pressure rises, the effective stress of the foil decreases more. And you may be aware that when we talk about the foil, the shear strength is the most important parameter of the foil, right? If I ask anyone that what is the most important property of the foil, it is shear strength. And shear strength is a function of what is called effective stress. So effective stress decreases due to increasing pore water pressure. And when the effective stress decreases, then there will be decrease in shear strength. And shear strength if uh, is completely become zero. In that case, uh, this will be soil will behave like a fluid. And when this behave like a fluid, in that case, what will be called? It is liquid. If the excess pore water pressure increases sufficiently to match the effective stress in the soil, then it is said that soil layer is fully liquefied. What will happen? That uh, that uh, uh, if pore water pressure is reaches to the such a condition that its effective stress becomes zero, then we say it is fully liquefied. But sometimes there is increase in excess pore water pressure, but still the effective stress is not fully zero. In that case. What we call it is uh, the shaking is limited or what maybe other reasons, then still the soil will soften, though it will not be fully liquefied, then soil is said to have partial liquefied. So we can say like this if effective stress becomes zero due to increase in pore water pressure, then we can say it is liquefaction. However, if effective stress gets reduced due to increase in pore water pressure, but it doesn't become zero, then we can say that it is classified as a partial liquefaction. So this was background about liquefaction. Now continue with that. What is its effect of liquefaction on foundation? How the, uh, does uh, the liquefaction affect the foundation? So normally, you know, the foundation of soil engineering structures suffers settlement or rotation when the soil layer suffers liquefaction. So during the liquefaction, if soil layer get liquefied, in that case, there will be settlement or rotation. It will increase. And pile foundations can be particularly vulnerable to soil liquefaction. If the soil below the base of the pile becomes liquefied, then there is a decrease in the base capacity. The pile can suffer excessive settlement. So as a result, due to liquefaction, what will happen? Uh, the capacity of the base capacity will decrease, and normally settlements increase. Due to liquefaction, bearing capacity of the foundation also get decreased. As well as there is increase in settlement, but settlement is a major issue, which is becomes so much that this is beyond the permissible settlement, or it becomes a definition settlement. So due to the liquefaction, the the settlement is becomes a bigger issue than bearing capacity. And most of the failure which have been seen in the past earthquake due to liquefaction is due to excessive settlement. If the depth to which soil liquefies is rather limited. Say in a relatively small magnitude earthquake, the soil surrounding the shaft may liquefy and loss of shaft friction may be expected. As a result, this will cause an increase in the base load of the pile, which can lead to an increased settlement. In addition to these simple cases, pile foundations are also vulnerable to laterally spreading ground. So, first of all, there is increase in settlement, decrease in bearing capacity. But there is another term which is given here, lateral spreading. In the last line, you see that there is one thing, lateral spreading. But lateral spreading is also a phenomena which is related to liquefaction only. Okay. And this lateral spreading is mostly occurs in sloping ground. Uh, in a level ground, you may have liquefaction. But when liquefaction occurs for sloping ground, then it could be related to uh, the lateral spreading. So as mentioned in the slide, lateral spreading of sloping ground uh, can occur if the soil layers suffer either full or partial liquefaction. When excess pore pressure are generated in the sloping layer, the slope may no longer be able to resist the static shear stress and it can start to slope. 
all foundations that are passing through a lateral spreading ground will be subjected to lateral kinetic load. Generally, if the soil layer has fully liquefied, then the lateral forces exerted on the piles by flowing down may be considered to be relatively small. However, if there is a steep soil layer above the liquefied layer, such a layer would also spread and these non-liquefied layers can exert large lateral loads on pile foundation as they are able to generate significant passive pressure on the piles or pile gap. So the last paragraph is, means if you have a, let's say a number of layers, what could happen? Some layer get liquefied, some layer is, they do not liquefy. So that is also a dangerous case because those layers which are not liquefied, non-liquefied layer, they will exert large lateral load on pile foundations at the junction. And these things we are going to discuss in this lecture in very much detail. Then. So all these things will be cleared once we discuss further. So before that, let's discuss what are the performance of piles in past earthquake. And this slide, and let me acknowledge again, this table is taken from the, the uh, literature, which has been uh, book by Madhubushi et al. This is taken, uh, this uh, table as well as figures in this lecture is taken from that. So we acknowledge that. Here, uh, performance of piles in past earthquakes has been given and all these earthquakes, this is 13 earthquakes here, is taken from Japan and out of there, uh, 6 are from Kobe earthquake and 5 records are from Niigata earthquake. Niigata earthquake is 1964 earthquake which, uh, and it, uh, it is very famous for liquefaction. You may be aware that in 1964 there are two earthquakes worldwide. One was in Niigata, which occurred in March. And then another was in uh, Alaska, which occurred in Michigan. So you have uh, in the same year two major earthquakes worldwide. One is in Japan, another in USA. At that time, these were two largest economies of the world. And in both the earthquakes, a lot of liquefaction occurred. That's why the worldwide studies started after 1964 on liquefaction. So, uh, you can say, of course, people know about liquefaction before 1964 also, but these after Niigata and uh, uh, Alaska earthquake, uh, studies on liquefaction pick up on worldwide. You could see that in this table, there are numerous examples of Niigata earthquake, uh, number one, number two, then you could have uh, other number eight, nine, ten. Then another earthquake is occurred in 1995 is Kobe earthquake and during Kobe earthquake also there was a lot of liquefaction and there are many examples here in this table related to Kobe earthquake number 4, 5, 6, 7 and then and 12 and 13 also. In different examples what is observed the diameter of the piles are given, length of the piles is given, it is listed is lateral spreading observed. You can see in all the cases, just lateral spreading was observed in all 13 cases. Okay, that means because there was you have sloping ground, then lateral spreading and the sloping ground can occur whenever a linear particular in the show. The last column of this table list how was the performance of piles. So, in some cases, this was good on the left hand side, it is good except when number second, but if you see in the right hand side, it is other way. Number seven is good, but performance for the other six cases, it is very poor. So, in the past, uh, when we see the performance of pile foundations, when the piles are passing through a liquefiable soil, then it has been observed that piles perform very good or they have poor, uh, performed poorly. So, both experiences are there. It is mixed experience. Good experience as well as bad experience. Both experiences are there from the past. Now, coming to this, we are going to discuss that how pile foundations performs in past earthquake. Again, as I mentioned earlier, these all photographs are taken from the literature that is from Madhavushi et al. It is acknowledged and this is uh, like, you no know, uh, everything is there. So, uh, the speaker acknowledged that this is not our material, rather it is including this photograph. What you have here, in this case, uh, in this photograph, what has been shown, I can explain it that this is uh, the collapse of Showa Bridge, okay? And uh, this, like, you know, when you have to, this 
So let's talk Soa bridge. You see that the span of the bridge, many spans have inside the uh, gone, they have gone inside the bridge. But uh, what you could see here that uh, the uh, in this figure on the right hand side, uh, this pile foundation is shown. Uh, because this, this bridge was situated on the pile foundation, there is here and below you have pile. What you have? There are uh, different spawns. You have AL is abutment, left abutment, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, P7, they are the PL. Okay. You could see that uh, there is a spawn, G1 and G2 is fine, but G3 coalesce, G4 coalesce, G5 coalesce, G6 coalesce, G7 coalesce. So many five spans of the bridge got completely collapsed. As a result, this uh, bridge is declared that this is completely, almost completely collapsed. This was the performance of file foundation in Niigata earthquake. So that means it was not good. If you see the Shoa bridge, I think this is shared here. Shoa bridge, so the performance was poor in the second case. Okay. So, and the pile diameter was 0.6 and pile length was 25 meters. So it was. Uh, centimeter pile, diameter pile, and length was also quite high. 25 meters is a big, uh, quite good. Uh, so the performance of pile foundation during Nigata earthquake for a show of bridge was not good. It is poor performance. Continue with this. The next one. The so, continue with Nigata earthquake itself, and this is a pile foundation for Nigata family court house building. So that has been also listed here. Nigata uh, family court house building. Here, see here, may not be here. This is from Nigata earthquake. So you you have in this case, uh, what you have you have uh, on the left hand side the details of the piles are shown. Number there are two piles, number one pile and number two pile, right? And then the soil profile is given here. What is there? This cradle is. Uh, as liquefiable layer, so which is quite deep. But you could see in this case, n values are varying 10, 20, and this is water level. So below the water level, because above the water level there is no point of considering liquefaction, below the water level where the n values is less, liquefaction occurs. And when we say n values is less, even n value is high at a depth of uh, in a 8.5 meter or so, still it gets liquefied. And then it is drastically when n value, so you could see. The liquid when the for the liquefiable soil, the value of n is somewhere between 5 to 15. It is uh, at everywhere more than 5, but n5 is nothing, you know, if uh, n value is less than 10, then soil condition is not good. And certainly it is expected to liquefy. When n is 5, then you have 10 and 15 and 20. What you have here, n value is here, continue, it is start increasing from here. But because depth is so high, requirement is also high. But after the when n become more than 15, then this uh, possibility of liquefaction is ruled out. This layer from point almost from 1.5 meter to 8.5 meter, that means about a depth of 7 meter get liquefied, and this liquefaction caused problem to the piles. And the damage to the piles has shown on the right hand side. But you could see that this A part is showing upper part of pile 1. Damage here, and lower part is shown as a pile two. This this is here. I can pull you know that uh, pointer here. So this case a part is here. It is showing the details of this portion. While B this is so this is corresponding to this. Lower part of pile two is shown here. And upper part of pile two is shown here. The third one here, which is denoting this part. Right? So you have so many here. What you could see here that there are damaged pile one at top part. Well, pile two get damaged in part one as a top part as well as lower part also. So the performance was not good uh, for pile foundation. Continue with that. So then you have effect of lateral spreading on piles and shear in Nigata. This is the bridge you could see. It appears to be intact. But later investigation, 
these this is a uh, this is a view of PSC in laterally spreading soil. So when we say laterally spreading soil, it means uh, the, there is a liquefied and there could be you know the, some slope. It is a gentle slope. It may not be leveled ground. Then you could see that this is the systematic di diagram. Their failure mechanism is shown on the right hand side by formation of plaster hinges, the piles, and the pier. So here you have plaster hinge in the pier, right? Then you have the plaster hinges here. Then here, plaster hinges are there. Then down also. So many plaster hinges is made. Two locations for the pier and two locations for each pile. So there is a pile group. Here it is two piles shown here. What is the soil ground? You have liquefied sand here. Top layer is not liquefied. So, and then lateral spread. So, what do you have? This is pile cap, right? Pile cap is embedded at the junction of liquefiable and non liquefiable ground. Okay. So, these plaster hinges get formed. As a result, it, uh, the soil foundation gets failed, piers get failed, and this was the landing bridge. The performance was not good here. This mechanism we are going to discuss in detail when we discuss the mechanism of single pile and pile group. Now continue with that. Effects of liquefaction of pile foundation during 2001 Bhuzar. So what you have here in the Bhuzar space, uh, what you have, this is the case there. So you have a view of the old birth with bettered piles here. Then you have new bars which is still in case concrete piles. So it is at A and B. And then what is at the you have subsidence in the cargo handling area behind the new bars. So this is here is from 2001 Guzar space. That is from India only. So you can see that the, in this figure, what has been shown is uh, the first case, it was the old construction, in the second case, new construction. And third is showing the position of the soil behind the new birth, so under the cargo handling area, and this is soil profile. When we talk about soil profile, you have soft plastic clay on the top, silty sand, and red clay. So for liquefaction clay, for uh, clay, there are no chances of liquefaction, rather they can lose their strength. But this silty sand is certainly liquefiable. So if there is water and if it goes under to go shaking due to Bhujar space, then this layer may get liquefied. As a result, there was a damage uh, in uh, the Bhujar space. And there was some damage to pile foundation in Bhujar space. Now coming to the second part of the lecture, today's lecture, let's discuss the failure mechanism for single pile in liquefiable soils. We are going to discuss only single pile right now, and then we will discuss once we complete it, we will discuss pile group also. So first of all, single piles are with small pile caps are usually you, uh, used to support individual columns. That means normally you know the pile foundations are used in the group. But sometime it may happen, suppose you want to support as individual column, then uh, only one column is there, then uh, it is possible that you have a higher diameter pile, uh, then it could be a single pile also. Firstly, the case of a single pile in level ground is considered, that means the ground condition is considered level. Two possible mechanisms of failure can be readily identified as shown in figure 1.1. You could see here in the figure 1.1. Let's discuss this and we will come back to the slide. Here, in both cases, pile is same, identical pile both the case. Load applied on the pile is also same. But what is the difference? There is a difference in both cases in the soil profile. Here you have liquefied sand. Here also you have liquefied sand. But the tip of the pile is socketed inside the rock in the first case. While in the second case, the tip of the pile is inserted in the dense sand. Okay. Now, because here you have a rock, so once you have the rock, it will support the pile. It will provide a good, uh, you know, uh, it will provide you a very good base strata. And when the load is applied, the pile becomes kind of a fix here at the pile tip. So when this actual load is applied, then it will move and it is called what is called buckling in equilibrium. This will buckle. 
first case the file will get buckling while in the second case when you have dense sand because uh, when the liquefied sand liquefies then the, it will penetrate to dense sand also and there will be decrease in strength of dense sand when you apply axial load compressive load from the top then the file will go inside the sand that means it will be going bearing feather that means it will move from its position so the file will not be at, at its place once this uh, sand, what we are discussing is here the effect of liquefaction see if there is no effect of liquefaction you have the solid line rotated line is the case when this the top layer get liquefied in both the cases when it get liquefied due to liquefaction first case file will get buckled while in the second case file is not buckled rather it is going penetrating inside the dense sand these things has been discussed in the last slide and let me explain it further so the single pile carrying large axial load from the superstructure is structure and located in loose liquefiable saturated sandy layer overlying the bedrock is present like this is the condition that means you have a soil layer which is loose liquefiable and saturated sandy layer which is on the top of a bedrock when the earthquake induced cyclic shear stresses lead to the generation of excess pore pressure in the sandy layer the steepness of this layer degrades significantly and under these circumstances a single pile can suffer buckling instability if sufficient length becomes unsupported and can fail by by forming a plastic sheet okay so what you have this is unsupported what will happen in the first case why this pile gets buckled because this pile is not getting let me fill this center and yeah here in this case this is the portion where there is unsupport support of the soil is not available to the pile as a result pile move in the right hand direction and it gets buffered okay so this is unsupported length is there as a result figure the initial position of the pile is shown as so as we already discussed and the dotted line is showing anticipated failure mechanism here one need to understand the location of the plastic in shown in this case so this is what is this this is plastic hinge plastic hinge is made at this point all right so there is a formation of plastic hinge in the first case but there is no formation of plastic hinge in the second case now let's discuss the second case which is when the bearing feather in this case in contrast to the case which we have discussed earlier the single pile carries large axial load like same as before and passes through the loose saturated sand rest in the dense sand it is resting in dense sand layer earlier was resting on a rock the loose sandy layer will again see a significant rise in excess pore pressure and the degradation of soil effect so as when uh, there is a liquefaction there will be increase in pore water pressure as well as degradation of the material and this excess pore water pressure generated is close to the interface between the loose and dense sand layer and transmitted to the dense sand layer the issue is here when being the dense sand layer the effect of this liquefaction will penetrate this this, this dense sand layer also so this will be penetration will be also here at the junction the effect will be not only lying in this case effect was only a pure liquefied sand because there is rock down there but here dense sand also lose its strength dense sand may not liquefy but it will lose its strength there is increase in pore water pressure so as a result the dense sand will soften and this situation will lead to following two conditions what are the conditions there will be loss of sharp friction of the pile and reduction in the bearing capacity of the pile you know when we discussed the pile foundation earlier the total load of pile foundation comes from two angles one is coming from what is called skin friction another is called end bearing or point bearing resistance so here both point bearing resistance and the extreme friction decrease why point bearing resistance is decreasing because the dense sand also loses its strength skin friction get decrease because this layer get liquefied so both the things will happen and under these circumstances the pile foundation will suffer a bearing failure and will settle into the dense sand layer as shown in figure 1.1 
in this case here this was buckling instability here this will settle you could see the solely line is a case earlier case while dotted line is the case after liquefaction so this is going down and this is there is a problem of settlement as well as the problem of bearing pressure and further the dilation of the dense end layer will generate large suction pressure in the dense end which also adds to the process of reaching a vertical equilibrium because what will happen the dilation means because when you have the you know loose condition loose end when you apply some load to the loose end then what will happen uh, when you apply the load to the loose end then soil will uh, will be you know that contracting but when you apply the load to the dense end then it will be expanding dilating those phenomena so this dilation will also lead to the, it will also add to the failure so this was the case when you have two layers of the soil one is a liquefied sand layer and below the non liquefied layer. so in this profile we have considered only two layer in one layer you have liquefaction and the below down layer you, uh, you don't have liquefaction now let's consider a case when this liquefied layer is in between two non liquefiable layers and what happens to that that is shown in this figure what is shown in this figure you have non liquefied layer on the top which is normally made of clay or maybe because in the uh, and then liquefied sand is there so many situation in the top part we have the clay or coachy soil that may not liquefy but below uh, depths you have liquefiable sand okay and down you could have dense sand so this is a similar case as 1.1b except the difference that you have one more layer here when you apply the load here in this case now the scenario is different there are two junctions two interface one interface was as before between liquefiable and dense sand and another interface junction comes here okay and at this interface is connection between non liquefiable layer and liquefiable layer what will happen that some uh, inertial forces is applied when liquefaction occurs to this layer then this top layer exert inertial force on the this part of the pile and it get buckled okay so this part get buckled and at the same time you could see it is settling also so as a result in this case it will be combined bending and settlement failure of pile in laterally spreading ground okay so this this in this case the failure is due to both effect bending as well as settlement so a commonly occurring field case is the when the pile is located in layered ground with no liquid these things what is listed in this uh, slide we have already discussed that this is a case for a single pile where a liquefiable layer is between two no liquefiable layer and the top layer is not so ridged but uh, the bottom layer is dense sand where the pile tube is located in that case the failure of this single pile will be due to both effect bending as well as settling so this was all about single pile now let's discuss failure mechanism for pile group in liquefiable soil which is the third component of this lecture so we are going to uh, last and third part of this lecture what you have let's discuss here also the first case where this pile group of two piles for simplicity is passing through a soil profile of two layer one liquefiable liquefiable sand and another is rock and two piles are connected by on the top of the pile you have a what is called pile cap you know this is pile cap okay and the load is applied on this pile cap when the load is applied to this pile cap then there could be two scenarios one scenario you assume that this pile cap is rigid and when you apply the lateral load horizontal load to this pile cap in addition to the vertical load always vertical load will be there so during earthquake loading what will happen this this system will be subjected to lateral load here let's say if i put here this will also have to lateral this pile cap can move from its original position solely line to the rotated line once it move then what will happen it will try to move the this uh, pile also so what happen get this plastic hinge one plastic hinge another plastic hinge this is at the junction of pile cap and the pile pile head okay and another plastic hinges form 
at the junction of leaky fiber layer and rock. So four plastic hinges are formed in the figure when the file cap is just moving in a horizontal direction, but it is not rotating. So file group in a level ground. So there is the four hinge mechanism in the first case. While in the second case, when file cap is get rotated, shuttle down, in that case, there will be three hinge mechanism will be there. You have one, two, and three hinge mechanism, and then these these three hinge mechanism are there. What will happen? This is the case when because this have come down here. So as a result, there will be no hinge will be formed here because this file is remain at its own location. It is not moving. It is not buckling. So buckling occurs only in the second file, not in the first file. All these things are listed here, so I can again. Deep foundations are more commonly designed with loop of file. Okay. The failure mechanism for, for file groups in level ground are considered. The case of a single leafy fiber layer overlying the bedrock is considered. Again, axial load is present on the pile group at the time of earthquake loading. As described before, the liquefiable sand layer will lose its, its, its stiffness owing to the generation of excess pore water pressure. Under, under those circumstances, the pile becomes unsupported and can fail as before due to, due to buckling instability. So you have uh, further mechanism of failure as presented in figure 1.3. What you have here? What is the failure mechanism for pile groups in liquefiable soil? So, what you could see here, either 1.3a and 1.3b. Uh, so, this this thing we have already discussed. Now, let's discuss the second part here. Uh, so, in this case, first part, the pile failed by forming plastic hinges both at the base and the pile head. This assumes that the piles are well rock located into the bedrock. If this is not the case, then pile tip rests on the bedrock, then no plastic hinge will form at the tip. This uh, plastic hinge will form only when this is socketed. If this, uh, if this is not socketed, then we, we have already discussed in case of single pile that this was uh, socketed in the rock, a plastic hinge get formed. But when it is going to uh, not in the rock, then there is no formation of plastic hinge. In the, both the cases here in the group, it is inside the rock, so plastic hinge get formed here. Then, in this mechanism, pile cap will suffer lateral displacement and small vertical settlement that may cause significant distress to the filtration. In the first case, what will happen? There is a lateral displacement of the pile cap and the settlement, uh, the uh, uh, buckling of the pile. In the second case, if you are coming uh, here, a second mechanism that can occur is a three hinge mechanism shown in figure 1.3b. In this case, the plastic hinges will form only at the pile heads. One of the piles has to fail by buckling instability, and this mechanism can cause severe rotation of the pile cap, causing significant distress to the superstructure. Also, it should be noted that this mechanism can occur even if the pile tips are well socketed to mobilize full filtratory at the pile tip. So, this is the case here. So, I think it is clear that in the first case, uh, what is the difference? Uh, depending on the load condition. In the first case, there is a formation of four hinges, plastic hinges, and as a result, pile, both piles will get buckled. Once both piles get buckled, the, uh, the pile cap will slide. In the second case, uh, there is a, a plastic hinges formed at only three places. For pile second, at uh, both cases, but the pile first, it is only at the top. And this is depending on the load condition. So, and uh, this is uh, because uh, this, uh, in one case, this could be the uh, mechanism of failure in another case. So, either of these could be possible. Once you have, if this is the second is the scenario, in that case, file cap will get rotated as shown here, right? So, this was the case when the this file group of two by two file group is passing through the two layers. One is liquefiable, another is raw. Now, let's discuss the last case. For the pile group. When this pile group is passing through the three layers, that is rock at the down, then liquefied sand, and the top is non liquefied layer, then the situation is more dangerous than the earlier one. Because 
at the junction of non liquefied and liquefied layer this layer will apply what is we call inertial force to the uh, these piles so there is a pile group failure in lateral stage with no liquefied crust on the top let's discuss this case the soil profile considered is the same as before with a non liquefied crust layer underlain by liquefied sand layer this is similar to earlier only the difference that on the top of liquefied soil, soil we are considering one more layer which is non liquefied the pile group is socketed into the rock the axial load from the superstructure is present on the pile group at the time of the earthquake loading the failure mechanism of the pile group is shown in figure 1.4 large lateral loads will be generated on the piles due to the passive earth pressure from the non liquefied crust on the piles and pile cap this is in combination with the axial load can cause excessive bending of the piles leading to the formation of pore hinges as shown in the figure 1.4 this will lead to the formation of hinges this was all about that what we have discussed in this lecture this lecture was completely when the piles are passing through the liquefied soil let me summarize this lecture first thing what we have discussed is what is liquefaction second thing we have discussed what are the performance of the pile foundations during the past earthquake when the piles are passing through the liquefied ground In the third case, we have discussed the failure mechanism of single piles when they are passing through the liquefied soils. Then we have considered two cases, two soil profiles. And the last one part of this today's lecture was failure mechanism of pile groups in liquefied soils when they are passing through the free layer ground. And I hope that you will find this very interesting. Thank you very much for your kind. Of